what can we do with screen? With screen, we do many different things. First, we set background. We wish from time to time to refresh the screen if we want to show something that has not been shown before it. Or if we want to unshow something, then we use flip function. We might wish to show some text, prepare textures, and then show those textures on the screen, which can be any kind of image. Uh, you may wish to show certain shapes, disks, ellipses, squares, dots, etc. There are specific functions for it. Um, and the most complex is to open and play movie. Uh, and everything is possible under side to box if you know how to. Mental chronometry is a well-known approach to study the cerebral functions using behavior or performance of human subjects on a simple reaction time task. Uh, Franz Donders, a Dutch uh, ophthalmologist and neurophysiologist, is a pioneer of the measurement of reaction time. Uh, he used reaction times to understand cognitive processes as early as 1868. He proposed a subtractive method, which is widely used till now, to isolate different stages of sensory motor processing. As a function of a difference in the task, responses to physically identical stimuli can vary greatly. Simple reaction time requires just detection of any kind of stimulus. And it is the shortest reaction time latency. Go no go task requires to respond just to one kind of the stimuli while ignoring the other. For example, press button to a green and ignoring red stimulus or responding to left while ignoring right. It will be longer than simple reaction time. And even longer will be choice reaction time, which requires differential response to different stimuli. For example, left key press to green stimulus and right key press to red stimulus. If all of those tasks are administered to the same subject, we can estimate the discrimination latency by subtracting simple reaction time from go-no-go -no -go latency. This added latency is believed to be the time that is necessary for our brain to discriminate two or more different stimuli. While if you need to choose the button, you can also compute response selection latency. In order to do it, you need to subtract go no go time from choice reaction time. Simple, efficient, and robust. 
it is of interest that at the times of Donders there are no computers and he used this kind of wonderful machine which is called pneumatograph to record reaction time uh, with the help of a rolling cylinder covered with paper where a subject marked his response with a with ink. Uh, if you wonder how the temporal precision has been achieved, uh, it's a very elegant approach with a tuning fork, which has a certain uh, fixed uh, vibration frequency for each cycle. It took something like four milliseconds. And this fork covered with ink left time marks on the rolling paper and this is how first reaction times has been measured it's really exciting we don't do it anymore uh, but we use function screen first we select one of the screens if there are many of them uh, typically it is a one screened uh, computer so it will be the the only index which is given by this function screen screens let's try to run it i bet it will give us only one number zero as simple as that now very important part we need to open a window which means that psych toolbox will turn off everything that is on the screen and sets on hold everything that is executed related to the screen so the screen will be entirely occupied by the system uh, of psych toolbox and here we indicate the the background and which screen we can select one of the many screens but in our case it will be only one it will give us very important index of the window it, we will use it many times later uh, in order to do something with this screen and rect which is the parameters of the size of the screen in pixels so if it is the screen, then x1 and uh, y1 will be zeros, zero, zero. But here there will be some dimensions. x2 is the width and y2 is the, the height. Zero in this system of coordinates is always in the left upper corner. So if you want to show something in the center, you take x2 divided by 2 and you take y2 and also divided by 2 and you will show something exactly in the middle. For the colors, here are the codes for different colors of the background and also of the, of the images, uh, the, the, uh, the shapes you show on the screen subsequently. Red, green, blue, classical uh, RGB system. Uh, something very important, why do we try to catch something uh, during our scripts? Whatever is the script, it is always better at the very beginning to run uh, this kind of loop, which is called try. At the very end, well, here in the middle, you put everything that you want to do during the execution of your program all the program is inside then you catch and you assign any kind of name you wish and then you run this simple function sca sca is to close everything close all the screens 
and disable everything that is uh, enabled by cycle box. It is a very useful function because otherwise you will have to restart your MATLAB and sometimes even your system in order to get out of this frozen state. Therefore, this is a very useful loop and I strongly recommend it to everybody. Uh, let's say I type here something really stupid and I run it. Hmm. Here it is, X. So it gives me nothing except X, and X tells me that he doesn't know what is this. And if you go into details, X point stack, which is subfield of this structure of this object, it tells you that it is in line four. So we go to line four and we eliminate this thing and then normally it works well the bugs bugs are very often and i strongly recommend to use this kind of uh, solution when you run uh, a script after uh, the the screen becomes gray or black whatever is your background uh, your mouse cursor stays at the top of it uh, therefore, you want to hide it so that it doesn't describe, distract anybody. So at the very beginning, which screens, screen open window, we hide cursor. We calculate center of the screen and then we can draw dots. We can draw a fixation dot, which is a very common place for, for many experiments. Uh, this is a very classical syntax of everything that is related to cycle box functions. First, it is screen. It is general name for, for many subfunctions. Then the flag, draw dot, like here, screen, screens. It tells you how many screens uh, do you have. Then screen, open window. It opens a window. Then draw dots. It creates a dot. Then Flip. Flip is to refresh. Nothing will happen after you run screen draw dot. The, the dot will be prepared in the buffer. It will not be shown right away on the screen until you flip it. As soon as you flip it, everything that is prepared will appear on the screen at once. Uh, This is exactly what I told. In other illustration to, to explain how it works, because it is not really intuitive for those who don't have any experience. So why do we need to flip? We prepare a dot that we want to show on the screen, but nothing is shown. Then we flip and we won't always indicate window. Window comes from the very beginning, if you remember, when we, uh, when we open window, it gives you an index. So if you want to do something with this window, you always mention this specific index. We you flip and then this dot appears on the screen and it stays there almost forever until you flip it again. When you flip it again, because there is nothing in the buffer, unless you put there something, the dot will disappear. You always have to think in advance what is going to happen later. Like this wise old man. This is the structure of the experiment I would like to demonstrate. What we want to do here is to replicate the Donner's experiment, we will have always a dot, well, or a square, it's a big dot, uh, in the middle of the screen. Once in a while, just for one second, it will turn red or green. And 
then after one second it turns black again then follows interstimulus interval one to three seconds randomly and then it again turns either red or green for one second the key press will be recorded during two seconds after the stimulus onset so it will be partially recorded during the interstimulus interval this is what we want to do and this is how we do it in advance we need to generate conditions the order of conditions which is red or green uh, for this we use function repmat which replicates this little matrix or a vector five times so we repeat it five times one two three four five but it is very uniform and non-randomized and we wish that there is no preparation so that our subject doesn't know what happens next red or green therefore we run other important function which is called rand perm i use it all the time and i'm sure that if you will program for experimental purposes you will use it also it is very nice and simple so what does it do it generates an array of this number of elements in our case it is 10 but it can be a thousand and randomly permutes their position it is not from 1 to 10 but it is 1 3 but all the values from 1 to 10 will be there like this if you run it another time it will create other order randomly it's not cycle box it's matlab but it is very useful for any kind of experiments so we do this and we get hmm, this is a very important trick you place a round perm in the brackets after the variable cont cont is created by us with repetition and now we wish to randomize the order of those values and this is how it works so first we create cont those are our conditions repeated and now we do cont equal to cont from round perm out of 10 it should be 10 if it is 9 it will not work because we have 10 elements here now the order of the elements of the variable cont is randomized according to what is generated by round perm simple easy fast uh, and this is what we do uh, interstimulus intervals are generated in about the same manner we generate a variation of the values from 0 to 2 with a step of 0 5 this is a typical syntaxis for it then we repeat it twice in a row one two and then exactly like i demonstrated before we randomize the order of those values now we have randomized order and randomized interstimulus interval uh, this is what we have to do again in advance in order to uh, enable only two keys 37 and 39 which are left and right keys and we create kbq just for those two keys requires us just them and we don't care about any other key presses and we pre-generate an array for measurement of reaction time it's better that you know you have in advance an array of the good size and you don't increase the size of this array during the run of your program you just assign new values to this pre-existing array and the other one will be generated for rt key 
what was the key that is pressed so that we can discriminate if the response was correct or not.